pega isso. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. Uh, wish you guys a very uh, you know, good afternoon. Good to see few folks that have turned off right now. Uh, so I'll come straight to the point uh, of discussion over here. Um, last time around, uh, the results are basically out for CP1. And uh, this term in itself, I think it's probably the most difficult. Uh, because by the time results are out, you probably might have had some other aspirations. You might have been preparing for something else. And right now, you might be at a position where you're going to question you know, the way ahead. Um, so I want to discuss, uh, I want to basically break this discussion down into a couple of objectives. First thing first, I want to make sure that we have an objective discussion of the paper, of the paper pattern rather than that has come the last time around. Uh, I'm not going to be mincing words. I'm not going to be speaking something that that that, that you expect me to speak. Uh, you know, in in this situation, I'll be as objective as I possibly can uh, with respect to the couple of papers that had come. And uh, post that, uh, we'll discuss the way ahead specifically for different kinds of folks. Uh, in between, I would love to hear from you guys as well as to what you guys felt about the paper. If you guys disagree with me on anything whatsoever. Uh, more than happy to hear you guys out as well. Um, feel free to unmute yourself, raise hand or speak up wherever you feel uh, you know there's a uh, there's a need to do that, and uh, we'll ensure we keep it as interactive as we possibly can. Uh, just one thing, because I think this uh, you know this uh, forum is basically open also for certain students who might just be preparing uh, for CP1 this time around. Of course, to them also it's going to be helpful. Uh, my question is, how many of you had actually appeared for it and the results came and it was uh, negative? If you can, you know, just let me know with a yes, no, or you know, just a thumbs up, uh, thumbs up or something that that really uh, set the tone for me to be able to understand. Uh, you know, all right. I'm not expected. So just one second. Or there's just six, seven candidates who actually did not go through in this particular term. What about the rest? You guys want to? All right. Anyways, so uh, just to have an objective discussion about the paper, to let's just say address the elephant in the room. Um, first thing first is that this particular term's paper was significantly different if you were to look at it from certain other papers that were asked of late if you look at let's just say the last four or five years or four or five terms this paper you will realize that this term in general was much more different as compared to the others if you look at paper one there were 10 questions and questions in itself does not really make a lot of difference the real deciding factor over here was there was a lot of sub questions as well Correct me if I'm wrong but I think none of the question had allocation of more than six or uh, seven mark for a single a uh, 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 question which is way too different as compared to what you would otherwise or what you would usually see in a cp1 paper so first thing first the question paper in itself was way too different as compared to what you would usually expect to see uh the second thing was that with that the notion was that paper two ka question paper is going to be slightly different it was going to be i mean a lot of candidates would have estimated that uh, the relatively more you know weightage or scoring questions are probably going to come over there, but that was not really the case. The allocation again in paper two, barring maybe question paper two, pa question number two in paper two, everything else seemed very uh, uh, you know haywire. I mean, question number one in paper two again it had ten different questions, which is very unusual. So the paper pattern, if I were to just discuss about it, the pattern was much more different. As a result of which, a lot of candidates uh, right after paper one as well as paper two. We had a discussion and they said that, sir, this time the time uh, allocation spe specifically to each and every question paper, uh, specifically to each and every question, uh, was much more less as compared to what they're prepared for because no other mocks or no other paper uh, that you would look at actually has this kind of a reception. So the pattern was slightly more different. But overall, and uh, I know that few may or may not agree with this, but overall, agar aap isko dekho, this particular term's question paper Although it was time consuming, although the mark allocations were significantly lesser, which probably makes it relatively more difficult to be able to score. However, it was not the most difficult paper. 
significantly less difficult than the last couple of papers and definitely much less difficult as compared to uh, September uh, 2023 question paper, which was significantly more lengthy and uh, which had, you know, nuances, which was much more different because uh, there were 15 marks, 7 marks, 9 mark question uh, questions in the paper, which were more generic and uh, not very specific to the content. This time around, the questions were smaller, 3, 4, 5, 6 marks, ke bohat sare questions ke. Uh, within that as well, uh, like we've uh, uh, like we just spoke, they were significantly more technical and less generic uh, as compared to the others. So the natural understanding or the natural consensus uh, that a lot of us had built was this time around would be a relatively more scoring paper. Potentially, you know, a pass mark somewhere between fifty to sixty, maybe even going upward sixty sixty one uh, would not really have surprised us a lot. Uh, however, we were in for a shock. The Pass marks in this situation was uh, 56, if I'm not wrong. And uh, a lot of uh, students who actually appeared, I mean, I know at least three or four uh, candidates who actually ended up, you know, not getting through by one marks or even less uh, uh, in certain situations. A few of you are a part of this uh, call as well, so you know it better. Uh, the notion over here is very uh i would say it is understandable what they are trying to do very difficult to put it into words but it appears that their strategy is to scale down both the scores of you guys uh, as examinees and uh, you know the pass marks in order to keep it at least virtually achievable because if you guys know april 2023 was that one term i think this may unka pass marks had gone up to 62 as well as a result of which a lot of uh, uh, people had appealed to that they reacted in the last couple of terms wherein the pass marks has although it has gone down uh but they have scaled down the scores as well based on discussion with a few uh students and uh, four papers that i have myself examined i count myself as someone who gives let's just say a relatively higher score other if i am giving someone 70 he probably deserves 65. i usually probably you know gives four or five marks extra is what i've seen uh, but even otherwise, the actual score and the score that I gave was that I gave to uh, a few of these candidates. They had a very big deviance. Surprisingly, one more thing. I mean, much more deviant than what the usual. I mean, if I 70 to 65, then they ended up. I mean, there was one candidate scoring in 51 as well. So 65 can probably become 60, 58, but it cannot go as low as uh, you know 50, 51. So that was one surprise. Uh, one candidate who thankfully cleared the paper as well, uh, he had a very big deviance in the overall score. Examiner 1 gave 51 and examiner 2 gave 73.5. So there was a 22.5 marker deviance in one paper. I'm not talking about the aggregate uh, uh, of it. I'm just talking about paper 1 in this specific situation. So paper 1, one of the candidates, 51 versus 73.5. Uh, personally, I have never seen this steep deviance in cp1 paper at least and even within cp1 cp1 paper 2 might have been more justified but cp1 paper 1 this kind of a deviance in this kind of an objective uh paper did not really resonate well with me so again uh in for multiple surprises uh thankfully the student cleared got very good marks as well overall basis pay but sr deviance in one particular paper should not ideally be the case in a uh, in a in a paper like cp1 so going back to the entire discussion the thing over here is there are multiple such surprises which have come first in this particular term, which should ideally not have been. Uh, it appears that the scales, the, the scores have been slightly scaled down. So has gone the passing marks down as well. Uh, the number of students who have not been able to clear by one marks less or maybe two marks or less is much higher this time around than uh, what we had seen the last few terms, which again is very heartbreaking for the candidate as well. Uh, to anyone who feels as such, you want to connect separately with me as well, more than happy to do that and then, uh, you know, discuss the way ahead. I would really recommend if you feel like because in a lot of these papers, why I'm bringing this up is at least four papers, I know that the, the, the points are matching the examiner's report, but still you haven't gotten the adequate marks which you should have. So in this situation, to be honest, I don't really expect that the institute would do anything about it. But the best course of action for such students would definitely be to file for an official appeal, uh, uh, send out email, be sure to hold up your grounds very firmly, be very adamant about it. Don't really expect them to do anything, but at least it will it will help our cause in the in the next term maybe. 
uh, if they were to learn from it and it will definitely help our cause if we collectively uh, you know go and try and uh, you know make it happen and that is what i was discussing with uh, uh, one of you some time back as well so it makes a lot of sense in my personal opinion to file uh, an official appeal in this particular situation because of all the things that have gone around i have also asked one of the candidates who cleared but had a 22.5 mark deviance to at least file a very soft uh, uh, you know email on deviance so that at least they can take a uh, little more care about you know how they are checking uh, those particular papers so that they are a little more careful going into the future now coming to ye to matlab situation hai is it a good or a bad thing i am no one to judge but this is what it is and we'll have to live with it the best way for us going into the future or going forward would definitely be to ensure that don't take anything for granted and while the pass marks may be anything way between 50 to 60 maybe 62 the aim should always be that you should try and score a 70 agar 70 ka aim karoge which is the highest score that i have ever seen uh, uh, with one of my students uh, in that case uh, on on an average basis in that case i think agar we we are aiming for that and we are going towards that and you know achieving uh, the feat i think we'll be will be probably be in a good shape so while i can understand that it's a very uh, demotivating thing it's very disheartening to see uh, these sort of externalities leading to the way the paper being checked and leading to the way that the scores get affected uh, it's easy for me to comment over here and say that you know give your best next term uh, if i was on the other side of the table i i i'll, I'll probably I, i can imagine that it would it would not be as easy uh, for you guys but you have to hold yourself up you need to ensure that you take this hit and then you know move forwards no matter what we'll try better this time around and i think next term pe if you are just following the best practices that we learn i think ideally we should be in a position wherein we can hold ourselves uh, up and uh, give our best now again one more discussion about cp1 is that why a lot of people call it you know the big paper and uh, you know the beast of a paper and some i mean that there are multiple uh, such acronyms which are given to this particular paper i have discussed this in the past very briefly to tell you this thing again is that there are two papers that you have to appear for over here unlike your other uh, you know advanced papers jahan pe spsa level pe you are only supposed to be giving one paper same goes for cp3 as well and the weightage over here is 50 50% each for both of them now if i want to compare it the most comparative paper to cp1 is probably cp2 jahan pe structure is similar that 50% 50% is what you are supposed to get but two things make that paper much more easier one it is excel so it's a much more practical paper and two paper 2 of that particular paper is usually much more uh, easier and scoring as compared to this and there are certain things that you just need to keep at the back of your minds and you will be able to score over here cp1 what makes life much more difficult is that there are two papers and you have almost zero room for error like i said 70 is the best score that i'm personally aware of uh, 68 69 70 this, these are usually the best uh, this time i i got across one candidate who got 68 but nothing more than that up until now so that's like the epitome and uh, anything below maybe 60 or 62 you are calling yourself in a in a you are you are basically putting yourself uh, at the mercy of the institute if 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 you are if, if you have to be objective about it so 68 yeah 69 yeah 70 maximum 62 ke below you are going into their mercy so it's like there is a 6 to 7 marks of room for error with which you can play around in this particular paper and all of these things combined together with two papers across two different days really makes the you know makes makes life very difficult and you need to give your best in both of the papers i didn't bring it up earlier but i have seen candidates not being able to clear because of paper 2 i have also seen candidates not being able because to because of paper 1 so aapko apna best in both of the papers dena even if you do the best you'll probably score 70 and uh, Uh, anything below 60 is 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 totally undesirable so that probably is what makes this paper absolutely difficult and i i, I haven't even touched upon the more generic and more obvious factors like the fact that there's 39 chapters you need to be well prepared for everything you are likely to be tested on each and every chapter from the entire syllabus or at least each and every segment of the entire syllabus only 10 segments uh without any 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 fail whatsoever so aapko sab kuch prepare kar ke rakhna hai unlike in case of earlier papers jahan pe maybe cp1 mein sorry cm1 mein if you don't like profit testing leave it out don't go for that 10 marks but remaining 90 ko aap appear karke you can still get uh virtually 85 or even 90 uh, in that situation 
but that really doesn't work out in case of CP1, which makes life again slightly more difficult and challenging for the uh, for the students. So yes, of course, yes, speaking like the obvious, speaking about the facts, the factors that have impacted this particular paper, the general factors that impact us uh, in this particular term as well. A few uh, uh, suggestions uh, or, or a few things that you guys uh, who have not been able to clear the last time around could potentially impact is maybe you know just take out a couple of days. I won't say that start immediately. Maybe just uh, take a take a couple of days of uh, breather uh, for yourself. Get yourself back uh, uh, on your feet, and then start analyzing. First thing is be prepared for every kind of paper. Don't have this notion that you know there will be seven marker, eight markers, ten markers. Ensure that whatever is the mark allocation, you are prepared for everything. For that, given that you guys are already candidates, you know, पहले से paper दे रखा है, I would really recommend you guys to on a daily basis, of course, ensure that you are looking at certain chapters and certain questions. But at the end of the day, have this notion that you start solving papers together and timing yourself in that particular, uh, uh, you know, time frame. That have three hours, twenty minutes, write particular papers. At least from here till examination, you have June, uh, sorry, your July and August, and some part of September. Within that, if you have one or two weeks, or let's just say even in two weeks, if you can do one particular paper for for this month and do one particular paper uh, uh, a week in the next month, you will honestly realize. it will be much better prepared for the question paper that uh, uh, comes during the examination be thoroughly objective when you are marking yourself as well when you are doing this particular exercise trust me this exercise will help you guys a lot it has helped one of the candidates who scored 35 in the first attempt uh, to around 52 in the second attempt to the 70 who jiska main baat kar raha hu actually uh, is the highest scorer in cp1 that i know so first and second attempt were not the greatest uh, for him or her But by the third attempt, utilizing this strategy actually ended up creating, uh, or let's just say, connecting a lot of do dots uh, 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 for that particular candidate, and score, of course, went up very high. So these best practices, I would suggest and recommend that do ensure you are uh, uh, keeping well in place and well in check. S separately, also ensure that a lot of questions in CP one, which multiple times I have seen people face struggle or face. uh difficulties with is that ek to aapka jo have a strategy for yourself that if there's any question with a mark allocation of 7 8 or whatever set a strategic benchmark for yourself ki agar 8 marks se zyada ka koi bhi question aayega i have to ensure that i'm writing sort in general points out there if your points the points that you've written matches the examiner's report you're much likely to get marks one more uh general observation is that candidates who write their answers in a much more representative way in a much clearer form in much more cohesive way they end up scoring relatively higher because it makes the lives of examiners much more easier so chote chote points likho don't really try to complicate your points with a lot of length agar aapke paas ek sentence hai of three let's say three lines break it down into dot 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 forms jo aap uh, a lot of examiners report mein bhi dekhte hoge dot 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 means just break it down write those three under one bullet but ensure that you are keeping a break between the three so that me as an examiner when i am reading it there is zero probability that i'll miss out on the uh, key terms because the examiners they have to actually give you marks if at all uh, it you know your points are matching the examiner report the th and uh, we'll be discussing about the examiner uh, checking as well so ye sara just general points do ensure you are keeping at check and the third and most important one would be a lot of questions jahan pe you will potentially be at a lack of points kya aapko lag raha hai ki ye question bahut general hai isme aap points nahi generate kar pa rahe ho with respect to some technicalities based out of paper do keep a do ensure that you are rather creating a, a you know a benchmark for yourself try and create those answers in a way which can tie back to at least one or two of the chapters agar aap dekho for example a very good representative paper for this would be september 2023 ka paper september 23 paper 2 if you were to look at it you will realize paper 2 ke first question ke first three questions uh, sub part of the questions were actually very generic looking it appeared as if in that particular question paper it was very difficult to be able to score marks it was it seemed very difficult and it it didn't resonate well with any particular chapter uh, that you would otherwise deal with 
बट अगर आप जाके देखो दे हैड एक्चुअली गॉटन सर्टेन पॉइंट फ्रॉम द मॉडलिंग सेगमेंट ऑफ ऑफ योर सिलेबस सो द पॉइंट ओवर हेयर इज सर्टेन चैप्टर्स और सर्टेन क्वेश्चन इफ when you are looking at it you are not able to clearly cut out and say acha ye particular question it looks like very general it is not representative or it is not reflective of any particular uh, segment in the book you might be in for a surprise to realize unka koi na koi jagah se connection rehta hai and do ensure that your this is like the most important of all the points that you have discussed so far do ensure that your reading comprehension and reasoning skills are at a certain level when you are reading uh, when you are reading when you know when you are reaching out for the examinations multiple times candidates who do not end up scoring good in certain questions is not because they were not prepared or because they didn't know certain questions it's because they are not able to read between the lines of certain questions so a question jo lagega ki aapko describe the relative merits it's not really asking you to write the advantages it is asking you to critically examine the advantages and disadvantages so that is what happens with a lot of candidates in a lot of questions with cp1 aapko lagta hai aap comprehend karte ho question ko in a particular way but they are really testing your reasoning in a much more deeper way and with one word here and there the entire premise of answers changes multifold how will you calculate premium versus how will you calculate net premium if i were to have a general discussion with you guys there's probably no difference but in a cp1 question paper it can create a whole lot of difference so do ensure that you are reading between the lines and identifying the traps that they have with a lot of these uh, 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 you know questions in multiple questions specifically in this term uh, uh, a lot of these questions which were 3 mark 4 mark 5 mark they had certain tricks between the lines the questions might resonate seem like acha to bahut easy hai but if you see in a lot of those questions aapko hoga ki instead of 5 where you anticipated 5 you might have gotten 0.5 or maybe 1 not because you didn't know the content but because you read the question in a different way comprehended in a different way you reasoned in a different uh, line altogether as a result of which you lost your precious marks so multiple cases aisa hota hai jab aap relative merits mein sirf advantages likh rahe ho 5 mark ka question hai to you are only attempting for 2.5 marks and you are not really attempting for 5 marks so agar aap 2.5 ka attempt karte ho you can not really anticipate getting anything more than 2 or maybe 1.5 uh, in that kind of a situation so these are just like the uh, uh, basic things that you need to be prepared yourself for and uh, with, with, uh, before i like uh, put in some closing remarks and ask you guys for any feedback that you may have for this the last thing that i really want to discuss is that their checking is really very objective unko obviously pata nahi hota hai wo kiska paper check kar rahe hote hain and the first and second examiner who check your paper they actually aren't aware of the pass marks unko nahi pata hota hai pass marks this is based on discussion with someone who i know who has been checking papers uh, uh, of late the first and second examiner who is actually checking your paper they are actually unaware of the pass marks so they will be as objective about your question paper as it possibly can get they are also retested on multiple parameters because in in a lot of cases the lot of papers that they check agar deviance zyada hota hai to it goes to the chief examiner so they are trying at least their best to ensure that systems and checks in place are such that deviation kam se kam ho however it is humans who are checking that particular paper uh, so you need to be of course wary of you know some amount of uh, inconsistencies that can happen here and there but the reason why i'm introducing this discussion is that examiner 1 examiner 2 the first two examiners are totally unaware of the pass marks they will probably be as objective as it can possibly get in terms of checking your particular paper mm. do ensure that you are writing it in such a way that first and second one like basically up you know you are crossing the limit there itself because third and fourth are basically chief examiner and unke paas tab jata hai after the uh, you know the, the the benchmark is set for example 56 in this case so benchmark set hone ke baad jata hai to the third and fourth examiner and unless they have a reason to believe that you have executed something which is phenomenal you should ideally be getting 60 65 uh, plus they'll probably fail you by one uh, or one and a half marks i very I, i know just one or two candidates uh, jinka maine suna hai at least indirectly ki third or fourth examiner ne unko pass kiya because they already know the pass marks they already know that you are probably on the borderline and uh, they come with this preconceived notion as well but the first and second examiner are really aware of this 
So you need to ensure that you're maximizing your chances with the first and second examiner itself, which means you need to ensure that you're working out on the best practices. And those best practices will also include how you're structuring your answers, how you're presenting them, not having a lot of you know paragraphs, ensuring that you're reading between the lines and all of these things. These are checklists. If you are able to uh, put yourself together and you know follow these to the T over the next couple of months, I see no reason to believe that given that you guys are already here, you will you you know you will not be able to uh, cross that particular benchmark or, or that cross that particular line. Um, that's what I had to discuss. Now I'll open up if, if you guys have any questions, any specific question, this term, any other term, any other general discussion that you guys want to have. I'll be more than happy to uh, take up any questions that you guys have. Uh, otherwise, yeah. And, and of course, like I discussed, that if you want to have a separate one-on-one uh, -on -one chat with me uh, on the paper as well, he, how the paper was, if there was you know, something inconsistent that you identified, RK papers may if you ended up noting something which you believe should not have been the case because right now I am sitting at a place with four people uh, who were very close to you know passing and I would like to believe Bhati unke saath bhi hua hoga uh, because it was just 55 marks which was uh, required to be scored uh, sorry 56 to be scored so a lot of you might be very close and if you guys want and you know and, and like we discussed earlier if we should be going for a formal appeal Let's go collectively together, do a formal appeal so that at least in the next term, you know, things can be much more streamlined and not this random, which I have real, which I've rarely seen in the past. So yeah, guys, that's, that's, that's kind of it from my end. Uh, any questions, it's open to you guys. More than happy to hear your views uh, and more than happy to uh, discuss. In the term, the questions asked for repetitive answers for a five marker. I was not able to generate more than six, seven points. Uh, how can we work upon that? Uh, so Sahil, in certain situations, yes, it becomes a, a kind of a trouble. Kahin kahin pe, in CP1, the problem really is that you're not really able to generate unique points. Aapke paas honge char points, points uh, which are general, which you can realize that okay, these are the three, four things, but you're not really able to think out of the box and create more points. And it, of course, hampers your scorability a lot. If I have given you a premise and uske upar I'm giving you two, three questions, two of which are similar. So how do you tackle this kind of a situation is, and if you look at their examiner's report or examiner's reports, if you have assets, so do utilize this and look, look at assets. What they do in this kind of papers or in this kind of questions is that they will probably end up having one idea, a notion pick up. They will exhaust it to a particular point, maybe even include a counter thesis to their own point, and then move on to the next uh, uh, point before they kind of progress. So an example over here can be, let's just say, um, uh, I mean, I, I could have picked up a particular question as well. I just can't uh, remember one right now. If, if you can let me know any specific question, maybe we can just have a quick look at that and try and improve ourselves over there as well. But the idea, the general notion is pick up a point, think through it, exhaust it, include counter thesis to your own point and then move forward. So maybe just this example might help. Manlo, you have an investment related question. That you want to identify the investment strategy uh, for this particular general insurance company, right? And second one is again, let's just say similar. Uh, they are they are asking that okay, they want to invest in equities. What are your considerations? For example, so they've given you some background about a GI company. They have asked you to formulate a uh, investment strategy for them. And the uh, question number two is whether equity or equity makes sense for you or not. First and foremost thing is read the sub parts before you start the first part. So you know that equity ko aapko thoda sa side rakhna in part one. Within part one, now you know that you can't really touch upon equity. Still, you have to generate enough points for, say, hypothetically speaking, eight marks. Like I said, pick up a point, exhaust it, give counter thesis, and then move forward, which means you might start by saying, give a maybe give a brief opener to begin with. That investment strategy is where you're looking at nature, term, uncertainty, currency of liabilities, ensuring that you are within the risk budget and you're maximizing the returns. This which we have discussed many times. Then pick up one particular investment, saying that potentially for, for this particular GI company, given their uh, investments uh, or, or given their liabilities are short-tailed and real in nature, it might make more sense for them to invest a chunk of their overall uh, uh, you know, portfolio within uh, bonds, for example. Yaha pay a lot of answers stop. And then you pick up something else and then you say that they can diversify by way of investing in real estate as well. Don't do that. So let's circle back. The first point we picked up was 
they invest uh, a significant portion of their capital can potentially be invested in bonds don't stop there include a counter thesis point maybe include that however a significant chunk of investment which is being made towards bond will probably mean that over the long term they may not be able to get real returns as a result of this it probably makes more sense for them uh, to you know invest in real uh, uh, or let's say index in bond something like that so that helps you extend the point and it takes me back to the initial discussion we had ki agar aisa lamba sentence hai include dot 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 and extend that point so the point that you initially generated jo aapko probably 0.5 deta with this extension with this introduction of counter thesis you can potentially extrapolate that and maybe make it a one marker point instead of a 0.5 same goes for something else as well in an investment strategy question aapko sirf ye nahi batana hai ki for example you pick up bonds and exhaust it also pick up equity and say that equity potentially may not make a lot of sense for this particular investor because their liabilities are short tail and equities are are extremely volatile hence you know this particular investment probably doesn't make a lot of sense however an insignificant portion of their allocation can be made towards it just in order to ensure that they can get real return over the long term so the the premise over here is how to differentiate your answer is pick up certain points don't just pick up points which are to be there because investment strategy is not just about making investment it is about making investment decision which includes not investing in certain categories as well and within each category do not just say that investing over here makes a lot of sense because of these reasons also include counter thesis points to your own uh, points by mentioning that however these are the drawbacks and maybe include a suggestion on top of that as well but this because of these reasons potentially it makes sense it might look like time consuming effort to you guys right now but trust me solve four or five papers you will realize that all of these things and this thought process in itself will come naturally to you when you are trying to tackle uh, uh, for that kind of a question and it's it's a very important question and a very important consideration overall if you are if you are tackling a cp1 paper ki how to maximize on scorability in situations like these wherein you potentially also have to look leave enough room for question number or sub part 2 because there's a kind of an overlap between the two so us cheez ke liye you have to be prepared and in certain situations i'm just telling you kahin kahin pe you can have an overlap which means aisa nahi hai ki point part 1 and sub part 2 needs to be mutually exclusive uske jo point se part 2 mein repeat hi nahi ho aisa nahi hona chahiye it should not look repetitive and for that of course you need to put in effort so they can be slightly repetitive there can be in a in an overall points where in you are generating 10 points in part 1 and 12 points in part 2 2 to 3 points can be repetitive in a slightly different word but you need to create a demarcation between the two and use this strategy in order to ensure that you know you're not putting a full stop until and unless you're sure that you know you've exhausted it and only after that move forward to the second point if you are able to follow this to the t you will realize that you know your uh, your overall scorability will become much more higher anything else this was a very good question any other challenges that you felt uh, you guys might have faced Yeah, Shady, please go ahead. So actually, means after getting the result, the major problem which I'm facing is how to restart CP1. Like only two months are left, and I cannot waste my significant proportion of time in reading the mat and all. So Absolutely. means how to do it? Whether to only read the summary and then start with the questions, or uh, means the document which I have created in the Word, like directly read it and start with the question. Can you means guide it? uh absolutely uh, right so uh, shelly i think we have discussed in the, uh, you, you are a student right i think you have the uh, you do you have that uh, yes, material i am a student i have taken classes from you only in the last session ha ha so i would suggest that in this situation aap sabse pehla cheez uh, that that i would recommend is don't end up spending a lot of time in the material it will be a waste of your effort but at the same time don't jump directly into solving questions as well because then you will feel underconfident so how do you maximize on 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 this situation aapka the self notes if i had asked you guys and if you've created it of course go through that but simultaneously also ensure that you know if if you guys can utilize the mind maps for each and every chapter ek din mein if you do you'll probably be able to get done with three to four chapters utilize that mind maps but ensure that you're exhausting it completely because mat is so lengthy agar aap ek ek if you start reading through the lines it'll end up consuming a lot of time so go through those mind maps that will be your step number 1 Go through those mind maps exhaustively. Try and cover up maybe in the next ten to twelve days. 
अगर आप एक एक सेगमेंट अ डे इफ यू आर ट्राइंग टू कवर अप यू प्रोबेबली बी इन सिचुएशन विद सम लैग और वट एवर यूल बी इन अ पोजिशन वेर इन द नेक्स्ट कपल ऑफ वीक्स दो हफ्ते में आपका सारा मटीरियल एटलीस्ट of on an overview perspective it will get clear right so that should be the first focal point for you to give it simultaneously given that aapne bahut sare revision note ke question pehle bhi kiye honge and i would like to believe that some of them might be marked as well do go through those important revision notes ka question but your focal point or your focus area going into the future after you have done this you know couple of weeks of hard work of going through the entire material your focus should ideally be not on solving those revision note question paper but on solving question papers why i say this is because with revision notes you have a conceived notion that okay when you're looking at booklet number 3 and 4 you're only preparing yourself for investment but that need not necessarily be the case when you're you know actually sitting in the examination because over there anything and everything can uh, can basically pop up so the strategy is look at all of those mind maps go through them exhaustively don't just skim through them If you just read through that very uh, efficiently, you will realize two weeks. Me, आपका वो कवर हो जाएगा. Go through a few revision note questions and then start focusing uh, on A sets and past papers. These two, if you have, uh, just utilize them to the extent that you uh, uh, can, and you will realize that you know your 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 confidence in itself is going to be much higher uh, before the next term. But having said that, this is just my suggestion. If you guys feel personally this is not a blanket for everyone agar aapko personally lagta hai ki you might need to refer the entire material once as well do that matlab whatever fits your whatever floats your boat is what ideally has to be the strategy but given the time crunch right now that we are sitting at with with, with let's just say just two months to go it really is not going to be very efficient way for everyone to go through that so we need to be a little careful about uh, uh, timing as well and i can anticipate that do mahine mein aap kafi kuch bhul bhi gaye honge uh but trust me if you have really studied it hard enough and if you go through that you will realize that there are recollections uh, uh to that you will realize acha ha ye ye cheez hai i know these things these are the areas that i'm strong with these are the areas that i'm weak with and this is where i need to strategize and you know these are the things that i need to take care of so wo wo thoda aur uh, easier ho jayega if you are doing it that way uh sahil i think you have raised your hand i'll go through the questions over there uh, on the chat box as well Uh, eight second. The bans as of now we have only less than two months before the exam. Uh, so what should be the next steps to prepare for CP one? Given that I have just uh, started CP studying CP one. अगर आपने अभी CP one पढ़ना ही start किया है, then you will have to invest a lot of time, effort, and energy towards it. uh cp1 usually is i would say of all the papers it's probably most time consuming because uh, of the discussions that we earlier had aapke case mein agar aapne just start kiya to you will have to ensure that you are able to allocate at least 3 to 4 hours on a daily basis on 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 an average and maybe 6 5 to 6 hours over the weekends uh if you can commit that sort of time timing to this particular paper then of course i think it makes sense otherwise in less than 2 months covering the entire syllabus is not easy for everyone have others done it yes they have uh, but yeah you will end up realizing that you know it, it, you will not get that comfort and confidence and it will feel touch and go for you uh, despite all of the efforts so do ensure that if, if if there is someone else as well who is just starting off uh, do be be prepared to commit a lot of time effort energy and be prepared for some sleepless nights as well because you will start self right self doubting and questioning your 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 decision in some time until and unless you can commit that sort of timing to uh, all of it and sahil i think aapka ye second question probably got discussed you will booklet or your past paper booklet dekhna zaruri hai booklet gives you a sense of confidence booklets ke certain questions which you know for sure are not relevant anymore like direct question on, on contract design ya fir uh, certain questions on um uh, you know which are direct book work liquidity preference theory and all of those things historically aate the uh, but uh, pre 2019 questions jo aap dekh rahe ho be slightly more thorough with that don't follow just because you know you are going through the uh, revision notes to aapko sare questions karne hain us thought process ke sath please do not go through uh, revision notes of cp1 i would rather recommend ki wo assets ke sath aap karo if you can somehow get hold of Uh, the latest, the latest assets. Few of those, I think, we have on the this thing as well. I think a couple of terms 
old assets is over here as well uh, but but yeah assets are much more helpful tool for you uh, who have already given it once rather than revision notes because okay, revision notes ke certain points sadly are not representative of the exams as well uh unme wo jo points dete hain versus the points that actually need to be covered are, are slightly different these days so be prepared for that as well so make assets your best friends going into the future even if you look through even if you pass through one or two of them ek do paper bhi agar aap you just skim through you will realize what is the thought process of the institute when they are crafting those questions and what actually they are looking for you know from those particular answers that you are generating so do make it your best friend into the future it will definitely help your cause a lot uh, if if somehow you can get hold of these so these are going to be very helpful tools uh, for those who are already prepared anything else anyone else uh, who who has not connected with me personally yet but was very close to the uh, pass marks and i mean of course we can have a separate discussion as well and uh, very few of you here but agar aisa hai kisi aur ka bhi if someone feels that potentially you didn't get the score that you deserve based on what you've written uh, do connect with me separately as well let me just give out my number over here too and uh, let's formally write to them not really anticipating a immediate resolution but at least ensuring that in the next term they can uh, you know at least be a little more objective about doing certain stupidities like they did in this term So yeah, guys, that's kind of it from my end. Any questions? Of course, like said so many times, I'm going to be here. More than happy to discuss. Uh, otherwise, yeah, more than. Uh, 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 otherwise, we can just uh, you know call it off and uh, connect later or connect at for your as per your is more than it's, it's on your board now. That's all I had to discuss. If if you guys have nothing more to add, we can. Uh, end this particular session. Thanks, Arsha. Thank you. Thanks, Arsha. Thanks, guys. Do not lose hope and take care. I'll see you guys uh, later. Bye.